Our portfolio of sub-freezing dryers cover applications that require air with an ISO class 3 pressure dew point of minus 20 degrees Celsius, minus 3 degrees Fahrenheit. Our latest edition, the D1600SF, is highly versatile and works in conjunction with both oil-free and oil-lubricated compressors. It delivers unmatched reliability and performance at wide load conditions and is extremely space efficient with up to a 40% smaller footprint in relation to comparable twin-tower desiccant dryers. Let's look at how you can benefit from superior energy efficiency and best-in-class total cost of ownership in pressure dew point sub-freezing applications up to 1600 cubic meters per hour. With a design focus on energy efficiency, this sub-freezing dryer combines a pressure dew point of minus 20 degrees Celsius with up to a 70% energy saving when compared with equivalent desiccant dryers. At the heart of the dryer are two sub-freezing units that the drying process alternates between. So while one is actively freeze-drying the air, the other is going through a defrosting cycle or regenerative phase. Before the incoming air reaches the active sub-freezing unit, the dryer makes efficient use of its warm thermal properties. First transferring some of this heat energy via an air-to-air -air heat exchanger to the cold, dried air originating from the active sub-freezing unit. This ensures the air exiting the dryer at a pressure dew point of minus 20 degrees Celsius is at an acceptable temperature. It also has the effect of partly cooling the incoming air, allowing for the efficient release of around 85% of its moisture content, which drops to a reservoir and is drained from the dryer. Still warm, the partly dried air passes through and essentially defrosts the regenerating unit, eliminating the need for any additional heating systems. As the frozen condensate melts, it drops to a reservoir at the base of this unit and is drained away. The pre-dried air still contains some useful heat energy when it arrives at the active sub-freezing unit and before entering the lower refrigerated sub-freezing chamber, it passes through an additional thermal exchange process where it partly reheats the freeze-dried air that has just exited the sub-freezing chamber. As the incoming air gets progressively cooled, further moisture droplets form and freeze, a process that continues as it advances through the lower refrigerated sub-freezing chamber. This sub-freezing process allows the air to reach the desired air dryness. Over time, frost accumulates on the internal surfaces of the active unit, and when the temperature of the non-active unit indicates it has fully defrosted, a switchover is triggered between the two units. By opening and closing a series of valves, the controller reroutes the main airflow and refrigerant to the second unit, now making this the active unit and putting the frosted unit into its regenerative phase. Air continually flows through the dryer, which makes efficient use of the incoming heat to both defrost the regenerating sub-freezing unit and raise the temperature of the cold dried air before it exits the dryer.